In this week's video, I want to cover a whole range of mistakes you want to avoid when you do winter landscape photography. And the first mistake is to not wear proper clothing. You may think, what does that have anything to do with photography? It has everything to do with photography during winter, because if you're standing around freezing, then you cannot be creative. And after all, we want to be creative because this is all about going out and creating some photography art in wintry landscape conditions. I have three layers of pants on. I have my big park right here. If anybody is asking or interested, this one is an old jacket from Whistler. I of course have my beanie on and then I have my big thick insulated wellies on too. So I can just keep doing this for hours. On top of that, gloves. These ones here are from the heat company, the Merino wool linen gloves. And on top of that, I have like an extra layer, same company. So yeah, definitely make sure to stay warm. So the next thing to be aware of and a mistake to avoid is to not spend enough time on actually composing your photos. This is of course something you want to do with all landscape photography, but especially here during winter because we do not have a whole lot to work with in regard to light. As you can see today, we are basically having a snowstorm and the sky is as flat as they come. So we only have the ambient light to work with. So all the contrast in the photos that we make comes from the interplay between the snow on the landscape and the parts where there is no snow. And this means that you need to be acutely aware of the contrasts in your scene. The scene I'm photographing right now is a great example of that because I'm photographing into this cluster of old oak trees right here. However, if I had walked a little bit further down this trail and photographed it from that angle, I would have this field here in the background. And you can see if I was photographing these trees right here, I would see that field. So even though the highlights, the snow on the field in the background would make the tree stand out, I personally find that the cluster over here is much more interesting because there I have the snow carving out the shapes of the branches on a dark background. So I have background trees. And that is something I find to be much more compelling than having a bright background. Because the bright background may as well just be the sky and it makes the entire photo a little bit flat and boring, to say the least. So having that dark background makes your foreground shapes of the trees stand out. And from there, it's super, super important to make sure that you have a proper balance in the photo. Make sure that you have a more or less equal distribution of visual interest on either side of the middle of the frame. So very fast to summarize, spend time composing your photos. Make sure to use the interplay between shadows and highlights, the contrasts in the scene when it's the only thing you have to work with, and make sure that you have a proper balance. And if you want to learn even more about composition and landscape photography, be sure to get my two eBooks. There are links to both of them down in the description of the video. They are super easy to read, minimal text, plenty of examples. So I get to the point fast and you actually learn something. So the next thing that you should definitely be aware of that can be a big mistake is to wear your camera over your shoulder when it's snowy and slippery. 
I always, if I don't put my camera away, put it like down here. So I walk with it down here. In that way, if I slip, the camera doesn't fall very far <laughs> and you won't break lens and camera. So definitely make sure that you Oh, it's so pretty down here. Oh, come on. Like, <laughs> I honestly think that it has been like 20 years since I've seen this much snow in Denmark. Oh, wow, that is gorgeous. But definitely be sure to take care of your gear when you're out and about photographing in snowy and slippery conditions. So I really enjoy the views here in this small forest. It's so beautiful, but at the same time, it's just so utterly, utterly chaotic. I don't think I can make any photograph here that's compelling. Being in it is amazing. That's 3D view of the thick snow laying on the branches, but taking a photo of it that's supposed to be like 2D and goes up on a wall or whatever, oh, it's, <laughs> it's becoming very abstract very fast. And as you know, unless it's a very, very, very good abstract, I'm not too fond of abstract photography. I kind of need that one focal point, that one thing I'm taking a photo of and some interesting branches or something like that. But right here it's just winter wonderland, but I'm not sure it's particularly photogenic. <laughs> So it's just notoriously hard to actually find a good composition, a good scene motive to photograph here in this forest because it's just so chaotic. But I have come to an area that's a little bit cleaner. This one's in here, I think there's something here. So right here I have this big beech tree and then I have a pretty decent background with these trees here and a little bit of an open background and I've zoomed in quite a lot to a composition like this here. Now I do have a little branch sticking in from the left right there. I've just been going down there and just like pulling it a little bit out of the scene so I actually get a clean shot without that one. But I do think I actually like this one composition here. There is a branch here in the background that I'm a little bit unsure about but generally I actually quite like it. Now one thing I'm very aware of when I take these photos in winter conditions and in snowy conditions is my shutter speed. First off it's very windy today so obviously the branches are moving quite a lot so I need a quite fast shutter speed. It's generally not a problem when we have winter conditions like this. I can stop down to like f11 and then up my ISO to like ISO 320 and that does give me a shutter speed of like 1 60th of a second. So if it's not too windy, I should be able to get a sharp photo where the branches don't move too much. You also need to be aware of the shutter speed due to the snow. If you have a long shutter speed and it's snowing quite a lot, then you get like this very misty atmosphere, which can be very, very beautiful. And if you have a faster shutter speed, then you of course capture all the snowflakes there in the scene. And those kind of photos have vastly different perceptions. So the one with the snowflakes where you have caught them, can be very chaotic to look at and obviously with an atmospheric look it becomes more calm. You can also try shutter speed like in the middle where you try to like make some streaks with the shutter speed. It all depends on the wind and the amount of snow and so forth. You can always try with like 1 40th of a second. That usually works decently well to capture some streaks of snow. But here is a photo. So I've come past this beautiful little forest pond and it's really not that big right here. But if I wait long enough, the wind does die down enough for me to take a shot where I can have these reflections right here. And then we have the forest like into the background. It's a beautiful little scene that is less abstract than what I've been photographing today. And I want to work with it a little bit more with different angles and also different focal lengths. But I think there's a lot 
of potential right here. So, so I'm definitely going to spend a lot more time trying to conquer the scene to my best ability. Settings wise for this one here, I'm at F16, ISO 50, overexposing a little bit to compensate for the whiteness so it's not like gray and that gives me a quarter of a second shutter speed. That is fine as long as the pond is calm enough. It does smooth out the water ever so slightly, but it doesn't like give this matte effect. So I think I like this one so far. I will definitely have to clean up all these small things here in the forest floor. And I will probably also add some glow here in the background just to emphasize the atmosphere a little bit more, maybe add some haze too. And if you want to learn how I do all that, all my editing techniques are available in my big Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. It is in this course where I share all my techniques, everything from start techniques to advanced techniques with advanced blending in Photoshop, how to focus stack, clean your photos properly, avoid different editing mistakes, dodging and burning, and much, much, much more. You can learn it in that course. There is a coupon code to save a little bit of money along with a link down in the description of this video. So after a little bit of fiddling around with the composition around this little pond, I think I found something that is really cool. It's one of those a little bit like mind bending photos because I'm really playing with the reflection here. So I was just standing over here before and now I have moved just over here. So I'm using the foreground, the lake and the trees. And I've made a composition that looks something like this here. So I'm basically just waiting for the pond to calm down and then I get a really nice reflection. You should be able to see the effect somewhat already now here on the back of my screen. Super simple, ISO 50, F16, and that gives me a shutter speed of a little bit less than a second because this one I do want to smooth out as much as possible. So one thing you definitely also want to do is to bring spare batteries because batteries doesn't hold up as good when it's cold. And make sure that the spare batteries that you bring are charged. So as you probably also noticed, make sure to not forget your lens hood when you're out photographing in snowy conditions like these. I hope you enjoyed this week's video, learned a lot, can use some of the tips I shared, enjoyed the photos that I took. This is definitely not going to be the last winter video you see from me here from Denmark this winter, because it has only just begun. See you next time.